Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody. Thursday morning. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely amazing day. It is an absolutely beautiful Thursday morning as we're about to roll with our daily market commentary where we do what we do each and every day, identifying potential breakouts and reversals trades from an educational perspective. Real quick uh, an announcement today. We've got a, a webinar tonight on investments. So if you are interested, join our, uh, our investment checkup. It's not trading focused. It is definitely investor focused. So if you have a 401k, if you know somebody with a 401k, if you have uh, a financial advisor and you just want to be able to ask them better questions and maybe hold them more accountable, go to tradersarmy.com slash registration to, uh, to register and you can join us for tonight's session. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. So today, starting with the S&P, we are down a little bit. We had a pretty nice sell-off yesterday. Now, yesterday we had a live trading room and we found some small time frame levels. And the small time frame levels that we found yesterday just did not hold up. Our 15-minute levels uh, did not hold up in these markets. We came right down through uh, these levels. These levels did not hold. There was a little bit of a, a wick over wick area that I thought might, uh, might give us a little bit of support. It just broke right through that area, um, came down to, you know, the pivot would be where your stop would be anyway. Uh, and so technically, what you may have done, if you put your stop below the pivot, which is a which might might have been a little bit of a wider of an area after six candles, you could have been out. So uh, either way, that that level did not hold. And we came down uh, to our uh, to our confirmation level and broke through that before popping up. And so that level as well um, did not hold because it broke through before. But then we came to our our retracement to the speed candle, right? Speed candles tend to get retraced and they oftentimes become decent reversal points. Now, in this case, six candle rule, one, two, three, four, five, six, it had really gone nowhere. So at that point, you take your stop, move it to break even. So you have gotten about an eight point move off of that level uh, at this point. Stop moved up to break even. Now, I'll be very willing to trade a, 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 a lot if you if you took the smallest risk up here possible which is just this little area that was a three point risk if you took the much wider then you probably got out at a round break even if you followed the six candle rule because that was a 15 minute level um, either way I'll take a three point risk um, take that stop out loss in order to generate an eight point return. And it's still running a little bit right now. What has that done to our four hour chart? Well, for our four hour chart, that's giving, that's given us a slightly lower low and a slightly lower high, giving me the okay to short a reversal. See, before this, I could only short a breakdown, which we'll look at that breakdown short in the NASDAQ here in a few minutes. But I could only short a breakdown. Now that we have a lower swing low and a lower swing high, it actually is okay to look at shorting a reversal. And so today, the, the best reversal that I see would be this wick over wick area here on the hourly chart. Remember that wick over wick areas, uh, when they're around pivots, you're going to want to place your stop up or around that pivot, not necessarily at the wick over wick. You can do it at the wick over wick. It's just a little bit more tight and you might get stopped out. Uh, but that's where I would look at for today for a potential reversal. Now, if you took this long out of this level, I would at this point take your stop, move it to break even so that at the very least you've locked that in. Um, I would actually maybe even be considering taking a little bit off the table um, as I look at this on a 15 minute. Uh, you know, you've got this wick up here that could act as a stalling point. Let's see if we if we stall in this region. But this is the area that I'm looking at on the on the uh, on the daily on the hourly chart uh, in that wick over wick kind of space. Next, let's move over to the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ, we talked about yesterday that you could theoretically take a break down below this line uh, in our live trading room. This is where we were in our live trading room yesterday talking about it. And we did get a little bit of basing below here and a pretty strong breakdown. Now, if you didn't take that breakdown, okay. Um, you know, that was a, that was a, there was a decent opportunity here on the breakdown trade. I know a lot of people may not have taken that breakdown. If you didn't take the breakdown, we did give a pretty good touch and go off of our hourly level. So from the 78.33, we've moved up to 78.73. So about a 40 point move off of this level. So if you took that one, you've now gotten a decent little run off of there, about a two to one reward to risk. 
Uh, once you've gone that two to one, now maybe take your stop, move it to break even, maybe take a little bit of money off the table uh, just to just to verify that I did get something. If you didn't get in on this position, you, it's still a valid level. It just has to move to a confirmation entry, right? So I will switch this to a confirmation entry, but that level does still indeed have some validity to it. So there's our NQ level right in there um, on that reversal piece. Next, crude oil. Crude oil is another one. I mean, it just came hammering down yesterday, uh, right through the level that I anticipated a decent reversal. Uh, really no stopping crude oil on this one, uh, as it just it just blew right through that particular level. Came down to the 15-minute zone, uh, and on the 15-minute zone, depending on where you place your stop, you may or may not still be in as you got a decent rally up out of here. I now need to remove both of these areas. Um, as we, you know, when you have huge sell-offs like that, and in and in market uh, dir directional turns, you're going to have things like this. Um, we broke right through that area, came to the 15, got a decent little reversal off the 15. So now, when I look at the four-hour, my definitive trend direction is definitely down. Right, lower swing lows, lower swing highs. Um, coming back up into this area here, we may get a potential for a retest. I'm feeling like looking at the hourly chart, maybe even going down to the 15-minute chart. You know, this high upper wick here really makes this the, the, the shorting of this again a little bit more difficult. So if there's a reason for me to get short, it'll probably be on a candle to candle style somewhere up in this region. I would need to look and see what does it look like from a candle to candle perspective. So we'll take a look at that one later today as price comes into that region. Next is gold uh, and gold, another one, the 15 minute level. And remember, these are these are all smaller time frame levels. That 15 minute level went right through. If it goes through the S&P demand, then it's going to go right through the gold supply. Right. That's that's exactly the, the way it occurred. The difference was we didn't have uh, a gold, another gold supply level up here to uh, to really lean on and talk about. Now, this this level here was still inside of the bigger triangle reversal pattern. And we didn't break out of that reversal pattern yet. So when I look at my bigger picture triangle pattern, which is on the four hour chart, all we've done thus far is come right back to the top of this. Um, we have not yet broken through it. Uh, thought we might get a little reversal inside of it. We had a really nice breakdown the day before. Um, from there, but let's see, you know, how much longer this area holds. Uh, the longer that this area exists, the, the better potential we have for a pretty decent breakout from that zone and from that region. So as far as a reversal trade for today goes, you know, looking at yesterday's, you know, speed candles and parabolic moves, you might look into this as an opportunity to get long when price comes back into this region. Now, always remembering, though, that that still puts us inside of the four-hour triangle pattern, which has, um, which has uh, you know, been a pretty strong area of support. Interestingly enough, this triangle pattern that we've got is a strong area of support um, that that's it's acted as resistance and support over the last couple of weeks. I don't think that trend lines themselves act as resistance or support. I think it's what it is. It's all the algos and all the traders that are using that, um, and then it becomes almost a self fulfilling prophecy. But I'm uh, essentially looking for confluence, right? Where do these areas of demand and supply line up with these triangle patterns and some of these reversal patterns? Because that's where I'm going to get more orders that are placed together. All right, let's go to our. Uh, bonds and currency markets. So in our 10-year note, we had a confirmation short uh, set up here in the uh, in the 10-year. Price actually came through here before it would meet some sort of an entry. We did come to the upper level for a reversal, uh, and I have started to get a little reversal off of that area. I actually, at this point, I'm not going to add anything new to this, uh, primarily because my four hour is telling me it's a, more of a sideways trend direction. There is a potential area in here for a day trade. Uh, for those of you that are that are looking on the day trade spot, I think there's a potential area right here, and then even an opportunity to, to trade it down to that region. I just think it's a little tight for me at this point. Uh, when I go ahead and look at the Aussie, so the Aussie yesterday, we just, I mean, ugh, that's frustrating, right? We uh, we we miss this by quite literally a tick. Um, it traded to 79, 70 odd nine, uh, and our level was at 70 odd eight. 
Uh, so quite literally just missed it by a tick uh, before getting a really nice rally out. Let me know in the comment section below if you did actually wind up catching this uh, at this level. Unfortunately, I did not um, because it was missed by a tick. And so that, that missed by a tick area is a tough one uh, to kind of deal with on that side. And there's, there's going to be... Uh, there's. There's going to be times when you just miss out on some of those opportunities. Now, we did uh, have a nice breakdown from our from our Aussie level, and the trade that moved down into here was a really nice level. Uh, and now we've kind of traded back up. So this is this was no longer a breakout to the upside. This is this was really more of a breakdown trade. But when I look at this on the four hour, this was a really nice move up and a pullback. We've come to this area of resistance. Let's see if we base below this. 706 area and see if there becomes a breakout uh, candidate at this point. It's not there as of yet. Uh, in the euro, so in our euro level, uh, we had spoken about a potential breakdown in the euro, uh, had a nice move from here. Price came rallying back up. And here, in just in the last few hours, we've had a really strong move down uh, in our European markets. If I look at this on a four hour time period, my trend continues to be down. Um, we are sitting right at what could be a decent area of support. I'd like to see some basing in front of this level, but this could serve as a potential breakdown, provided that we get some basing in front of that zone. If we don't and you get a reversal, this up here looks to be a pretty decent reversal point. We traded down into here, traded back up. Um, I wouldn't use this area up here. Your better level would be this area right in there because of that long lower wick there on this 15-minute chart. Now, remember, anytime it's a 15-minute chart, you do stand to take lower probabilities because you're trading on lower time frames, okay? Uh, in the Canadian dollar, so our Canadian dollar, boy, we just keep bouncing between these two levels, so nothing really to add until we get through one of these two areas, and we are now uh, over a week in between these two areas. We're going to break. It's just a matter of when, so I'm going to leave this one be until the meantime. Uh, Great British pound and Japanese yen. So the pound, we are coming closer to our uh, our potential reversal areas. However, I don't like the basing that we're getting in front of those potential reversal areas. So this was a little wick over wick level. We're basing right in front of it. Doesn't even give me a two to one reward to risk. So at this point, I'm going to remove that level just due to the basing that we're getting in front of the area. The uh, the pound and the and the uh, and the euro are not in. Uh, they're not in sync this morning, right? Whereas we saw the euro have a big sell-off, the pound is rallying hard. So definitely uh, news out of the UK and the European Union uh, have has caused that, that sort of an inverse relationship. They typically run pretty close to one another, but not this morning. Uh, and so that makes any trade a little bit more dubious in either one of those markets. So I'd rather just get out of the way of a speeding train. Uh, Japanese yen, we had talked yesterday about this breakdown. Nice little breakdown occurred. Um, we talked about taking your stop and moving it to break even. Now that area of old uh, old support acted as new resistance before then we got a pop higher. Uh, and so this now is really just a fair price value area in here. When I go to the four-hour chart, what are we seeing? We're seeing a lot like we are in the other currencies, uh, a slow trend direction, right? A slow trend movement. So, you know, on here, you do technically have a bit of an uptrend. Uh, but this is a rising wedge pattern, which is overall typically a bearish pattern. Uh, when I look at this on the daily chart, uh, we can see that our daily chart is an upward trend that has slowed momentum greatly. I think your better opportunity is really for a breakdown. And if you're a little bit of a bigger picture trader, this is a really good candle, uh, candle to candle trading opportunity uh, from that side and from that piece. So all in all, uh, we're getting a, a decent rally this morning off of our off of our demand levels. A couple of smaller uh, misses on those positions yesterday, uh, but then came into the bigger picture time frames, and we saw the bigger picture time frames hold a bit better. So keep that in mind always, right? That fifteen minute levels don't have the same validity that sixty minute levels do, and you're not going to have as high a probability on some of those fifteen minute levels as you would on some of the sixties. And so. 
make sure that you you scale your positions appropriately. You know, one of the things that we've talked about is how do I combine the micro positions with the minis, right? How do I take the ES micro, if you will, with the ES uh, and use that as a way to leg into trade? So maybe that could be a webinar that we could do uh, at some point in the future. If that's something you want to hear more about, do me a favor, the comment section down below, type something in that comment section down below. Uh, also, if you could, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. It doesn't take you any time whatsoever to push the little like button, but it means a lot to the YouTube YouTube algorithms. So I would really appreciate it. it takes you no time at all to go click. Um, and I hate being pandering for likes and things like that, but it would be nice for more people to see the videos. So, all right, everybody, hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow morning uh, or tonight on the webinar, tonight, seven o'clock, tradersarmy.com slash registration. Uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Feel free to, to come with any questions that you might have and I will talk to you soon.